My name is Ganesha Martin, and I am a, a public safety and a police reform expert. I spent about a decade in the Baltimore mayor's office and um, the um, Baltimore Police Department. And now I do uh, police consulting work across the country uh, where I hope to bring police and community to the middle uh, to, to create sustainable solutions. Once um, anybody touches, particularly people of color, touch our criminal justice system, it's almost like a fly trap. Uh, and it's very uh, hard to extricate yourself uh, if you do not have uh, connections and you don't have finances. Um, and it's just a really a vicious cycle because once you're in, in, in the criminal justice system, um, then it, it prevents you from being a productive member of society in a lot of different ways. And we just really haven't figured out a systemic way um, to, to, fix, to fix that. I came into policing with a very um, hefty distrust of police um, because of um, experiences um, that um, many people in my family had experienced, particularly the men. Um, and so uh, two things uh, that happened that were um, very pivotal for me. One um, was going to a police funeral. Um, where it became very clear uh, to me um, that the worst thing I was going to do was give a bad interview that day or, you know, I have a bad PowerPoint presentation, um, but that my life was not on the line every day that I went to work. Um, and so that that shifted me um, in, in, in my in my thinking. And then the other um, one that still drives me today is um, I had someone who's very close to me who was arrested all within the same 48 hours um, in the same city, but different jurisdictions. And the first police officer used excessive force, um, was very disrespectful, um, used all sorts of unconstitutional um, uh, policing tactics against someone who was probably in the middle of a mental or behavioral health crisis. Um, and um, the second time they were arrested, um, that police officer had been trained to identify um, those issues um, and contacted family, um, took that person to three different hospitals until they were admitted and got the treatment that they needed and stayed in constant contact with the family. And uh, all of that happened on my first day as the police uh, commissioner's chief of staff. And so that's driven me for the past 10 years to make sure that um, our communities get that second officer uh, and not the first. I was uh, interviewed earlier and, you know, that's one of the things that that I said, and even I said this at George Floyd, I said, you know, we, it felt like we were at this inflection point, you know, after Ferguson and then after Freddie Gray and then, um, just saying all those names, you know? Um, and um, everybody's galvanized to do all the things, um, and then it falls flat. And um, so, uh, you know, I'm never gonna waste an opportunity when people are actually paying attention. And uh, hopefully that continues to move the ball down the field. Um, you know, what uh, I hope happens, um, and what 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 resonates, and at the, you know what, if there's roles for everybody, and you know there are some people that you know I think you continue to push for, you know the legislation, um, you know, and and do some of the things that have been traditionally done. But for me, I want to do something different. I I want to I want to focus on the why and the how. Why could you? Um, 
beat to death a man that looks just like you a human being but certainly a man that looks just like you and it's it's taking me more into the social science or you know that aspect of it because right now i think a lot of training in police departments checks boxes um it doesn't actually get to the root cause um and and so you know i, I feel like we have to just look at the whole system in a different way and and account uh, for the human beings in the system um, and then also uh, the system in and of itself and what we're asking police to do. Um, so I think there has to be two different two different ways. You can't do anything and sometimes it's easier to push to get more expeditiously the things that you've already been pushing for, like legislation, George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. I would encourage people to continue to, to push for that. But we've also got to create this laboratory, this space and place where in between uh, people losing their lives to, at, at the hands of police, that we are pushing and creating and investing in the type of training and the type of oversight and the type of supervision and the type of accountability mechanisms that actually work.